with, with any sequel, I guess, you know, th I think there's a, a hope and expectation that you're going to do Super more, girl. bigger, better of, of the previous one. And, we, and we've done all that, but we really wanted to kind of come to the table with something dramatically different. And that's where we've introduced this system called a gear system yeah. uh, into the game of already existing characters that roster that's expanding. So right now we're seeing the introductions. You have that smack talk. We should probably be quiet. Otherwise, everybody's going to be mad. You're going to spit up on me, Atrocitus? Irritating people. You know who else does that? Babies. <laughs> so a little sass. Yeah, That's exactly. Back. That's something we started actually with Mortal Kombat X. We had the characters actually talking to each other. Mexi makes it feel like they're, you know, they actually know the other person there. Cool. Yeah. So how many dialogue options do each character have? Like oh. You know what? It is in, you know, Mortal Kombat had, you know, several thousand. We're into the tens of thousands. Well, like Johnny Cage alone has like 20. Yeah, he was, yeah. he was, he was, he was a great comedic relief in uh, Mortal Kombat X. But we really feel like that's, it, it's, it's become a big part of just kind of feeling like the characters are actually there and real. Um, little nuances like this that we, you know, expanded just as one didn't have it. But, you know, as far as like, you know, What's so great about this game is there were characters that inevitably were left out of Injustice 1 that, you know, really angry and passionate uh, fans would, you know, um, you know, rally for mm -hmm. and were able to accommodate some of those now, you know, Atrocitus, Supergirl, Gorilla Grodd. Blue Beetle. Uh, we shall see. Yeah, we, we shall, shall see. see. You're yeah. actually doing votes right now for who should be in Injustice. Yeah, I occasionally I'll put something on Twitter and ask people what they think, and uh, we're always getting trying to get feedback from uh, players as to who they want to see in the game. Speaking of characters they want to see, Black Manta. Uh, people yes. definitely want to see that character. He's yeah. a transition right now. Yeah, yeah. He's he's um, um, he's there's a possibility of it happening. I mean, right now we only have the six that we're announcing, but as we did with Injustice, there will have a a, 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 a cadence of release of announcement of characters. So in the DC universe, people don't kill each other, but they do do supers. Maybe if those guys can hear me, they'll do one really quick. Here is Atrocitus' yes. super yeah, against Supergirl. Um, in Injustice 1, one of the things in competitive play is you usually didn't do a super high-level competitive play, but uh, they did get a little redundant. Have you added multiple supers for each character, or no? No, they don't have multiple supers. Um, you know, some some our, our, our supers and our transitions are are somewhat shorter yeah. than they were in in, uh, in the first Injustice. We still want them to be you know really outrageous, over the top. You know, Supergirl throwing yeah. somebody. Uh, <laughs> Beyond the sun and uh, hitting them with their inner heat vision, but uh, we really try to kind of get them uh, going, especially if the transitions are a yeah. little quicker. So I just noticed her super alone did 32, and then she did something that bumped it up to 42% damage. How did that happen? Um, the supers are actually there's an interactive element to our super moves now, okay. and um, so there are are opportune. Uh, uh, moments at a super that a player can press a certain button or do a d different combination that will actually bump the damage up mm -hmm. and we're not documenting them anywhere it's just there for people to discover kind of okay. like our original fatalities that were in uh, interesting in mortal kombat and uh brutalities in mortal kombat x exactly we <laughs> never we never document them we just let people discover them and it, it's amazing how, how, how players uh, find that stuff and, uh, you know, with the FAQs and all that stuff, it's suddenly documented. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at Atrocitus and Supergirl right now. Uh, Atrocitus brings out Dexstar. What is Supergirl's uh, power when activated? Um, <laughs> Supergirl is, is her uh, heat vision. She can fire off uh, a, a, a number of um, individual shots and she Got can it. vary them up. And so, so it's, 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 it's she's a she's a very good kind of distance character, um, but but heat vision is her main kind of power that she uses. Got it. Uh, so we show the level transition. The level interactables are back. Uh, we have some of the the balls in the middle there that you can uh, swing off of, or do you throw them down? Okay, it looks like you throw them down. And uh, yeah, so. We've looked at these two characters. We're gonna check out some of the new guys in just a second. Yeah, yeah, we can we can check out um, Gorilla Grodd and maybe a, a character like uh, Superman or something. Let's yeah, see let's what, what let's their super moves are yeah. like. Let's um, see Grodd and Superman face to face, and I definitely want to see my man Batman go against Aquaman, who you somehow made cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that was uh, uh, you know Aquaman's. Shark super move was probably one of the most, you know, biggest wow moments that we had 
in, in the first Injustice game and, you know, some starting this game off right off the bat, we decided we, we got to, we have to top that. I think we actually managed to top it. For some people who've seen it, it's really um, perhaps the coolest super move that we've made uh, to date. But um, it, 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 the first Injustice game sets such a high bar for that stuff. It's really becoming tough to think of. Uh, right now we're seeing kind of their default gear sets, right? This is how yes. you start. Yeah. How does that progression system work? Well, after after the match, you know, the, the, the players during during the victory scheme will see basically drops of gear. And the, the gear is um, not only just like, like a visual aesthetic, like you can actually Superman has like a certain headgear that will get, but it actually affects your gameplay. It actually powers up. And so there's a number of ways, whether it's your strength, your defense, your special abilities, you can enhance your abilities, you can actually unlock moves. And so your character is constantly in this process of being upgraded. You're literally molding your characters together and um, creating your version of Superman. So your version of Superman after, let's say, three weeks of time of leveling him up is going to look different than mine, and it's also going to have different attributes, and you might have a move that's unlocked that I don't. So it's very personalized version of the characters. And there's thousands of variations, right? Absolutely. There's, 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 I don't want to use the word infinite, but but it's it's way up there. It's, yeah. it's crazy how that's really like one of the goals that we're with, you know, our games that we've been trying to do is to add customization and, and, and things that like where the player is involved in kind of shaping the character. That's the main thing. Got it. So basically what you're saying is there's no way you could ever see this at EVA. How do no, you normalize you it for competitive <laughs> play? That's what people want to know. Yeah, you know, yeah. we we, um, we are absolutely going to have a uh, like a, a, a mode of play that is kind of like a normalized or um, you know even level playing field of the character. Um, we want we really want people to get into the uh, to the to, to the building up of their characters. But at some point we need a competitive aspect, the evos and all the other uh, great fighting game tournaments that are going on, and um, so we need some avenue, and we will have an avenue of, of an even. Well, what about just people like me who are like okay at the game, but I'm not like top tier, a top tier player? Is there going to be a ranked mode? Oh And yeah. in ranked mode, will I be fighting people with crazy gear sets? I suspect, you know, um, well, the game's not come out until 2017, yeah. So we, we haven't fleshed out all the details, but I would imagine exactly like you had said, you know, if somebody wants to play ranked with their leveled up character. We should provide them some kind of a, a venue for that. And at the same time, somebody might want to play in a you know tournament kind of setting and rank himself with that. So I, I would be I'd be surprised if we didn't do accommodate both of those players. Yeah. Next up, we're going to take a look at Batman and Aquaman on a different map, ideally. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I really like the Metropolis map, and there's some lore there in the background. We saw it in the trailer. Yeah. Um, so Batman, there's, su sorry, there's Superman statues in the background holding Lois Lane, but Superman was the villain of the first Injustice. Yeah. What's going on in that level? Yeah, you know, that, that um, currently that background is kind of like inspired as like a memorial, you know, um, for, for, um, for, uh, I, I don't want to give away too much of the story, yeah. but, um, you know, there is certainly a, um, there, there are some who are vested interest in Atlantis bringing Superman back to power, Next have, have, have an diplomacy. incentive to do that, and so That's some of them here. were involved in um, some of the uh, construction of some of the arenas, <laughs> and so we have a, uh, a lot of that will be explained when the story comes in, but yeah, some, some are vilifying Superman and some are kind of... Making him a hero. Exactly. Interesting. So there's two perceptions about what Superman did. Exactly. Exactly. That's, oh, that's, there's, there's certainly a divide there. Okay. Uh, level transitions are back. Uh, the one on this stage is on the far right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is great. We're, uh, you actually knock the your opponent outside. And how are you changing these in any way? They're just kind of there as... Well, they're, they're, they're shorter, first of all, um, and you, so you see quickly the action starts up again. But we do have the, uh, you know, the different kind of palette of options, you know, and, and uh, objects in the background you can fight with. That That's always been kind of like a system to think with Injustice, is the arena, you know, we describe it as like the third character. It's like, you know, a considerable involvement in the, uh, in how you play the game. Uh, in the first Injustice, I would constantly pick Aquaman stage because it didn't have stage transitions. I know you can turn them off, Yes. but um, are there levels like that in Injustice 2? 
Yes, we are going to have some that are in the single arena. And uh, this is the, that uh, we were talking about. So, uh, that looks like a nasty fish, fish yeah, fight. Yeah. Uh, one thing we actually didn't cover off on, uh, wagers are back. Uh, you brought them back. Uh, there's definitely some facial animation going I on. Not Tell me about that. Not well, you know, choice. like, one of the things that, again, we're trying to really do with this Possible. So, you know, the Clash really gets them a chance to, to talk. The intros that we were we were seeing have them have them talk. You know, there's so much lore with these characters. So much like like you know, some of their conversations make reference to some of the famous you know uh, NPC uh, comics that have come out over the years. So there's great nods to that, and so that's always exciting when, when you hear something. It's like, oh, I remember that from you know. Flashpoint. Yeah. Uh, this stage is this a reference to a comic or because uh, our comic editor thought it was a reference to one of the Infinite Crisis. This is actually this is really uh, part of the continuation of our story. It's, it, it, it involves a rebuilding of of, uh, of Metropolis, you know, yeah. and um, so so that's again part of the story of of you know who is the um, on the side of wanting Superman to you know to to his regime to be hap happening again versus, you know, Batman's side. Batman got some new gear here. Uh, can we, uh, oh, never mind, they switched out. That's okay. Uh, let's check out the last stage and maybe we could go into the gear system really quick and showcase some of the different stuff that people can acquire. Sure, equip. sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, so this you is know, your gear menu where you can kind of look at everything you've unlocked and then equip it to each character. Exactly, you know, when, when, when you're playing the game and you're getting very frequent drops, a lot of drops of, of, of gear, you don't want to equip yourself with every single thing that you get. You know, mm -hmm. something might not be as good as, as, as your strategy if you want more defensive stuff and then you're getting it. But this lets you basically manage it. You can see all the stats related to it. You, we have these uh, these things that we're currently calling X stats. You can change the color palette of your of your character and kind of like sculpt the, uh, the the version of the character that you want as far as his looks as well. Yeah, so you can make design them aesthetically, but if we look at the stats here, level 20 looks like the max level. You hack the system a little bit. Then you got strength, ability, defense, and HP. Um, I was talking about normalizing before. Like, I'm very confused about how you're going to manage to do that. There just has to be like stats Super off, real. cosmetic only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. And and the um, you know, we really want you to, to 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 strive to get those those stats as high as you can, as far as like you know, playing against other people's characters. Yeah. But like I said, you know. If you go to a tournament, you're not bringing your, all your characters with you, and so you, you want some base level that will be the, the tournament setting. That yeah, for. definitely. So now they're geared out. How is this going to change the play style? Well, each one of those, each character has a number of 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 parts on their costume that they can change. It's actually different for for each yeah. character, and so the 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 original uh, version of your character has certain stats, and then I'm each one of those is, is upgraded with sure those uh, with the gear pieces that they have. You have I haven't memorized each one of those, and they've done literally yeah. thousands of them. Um, and, uh, and, some, and there's a certain amount of Yeah, like of our eyelashes were purple there. Exactly. That's, that's one of the... Um, some of, some of the, the, the visuals, are, some of them are aesthetics too. Like you want um, the different color eye lasers. Some are aesthetics and uh, statistics. If we could, really quick, let's see that stage transition uh, for the Metropolis one. I'm kind of cueing the guys in the background playing the game like, hey, do that stage transition on the other side. Uh, so aesthetically, Batman changes, but you can also unlock certain moves. Yes. Yeah. What kind of moves can you unlock? Well, you know, like, uh, when, when you have the game, you start off with the Batman, you're going to have a super number of moves. You, know, you throw a Batarang, you throw it at an angle, use your grappling hook. There is a like a, a, a triple Batman, a triple uh, battering throw that you can unlock, and you know those uh, become part of your arsenal of characters while you're wearing that, mm -hmm. while, while you're leveled up to that point, to that point, and then also you can start enhancing those moves with certain gear, yeah. like actually up its damage or something like that. And constantly, you know, kind of leveling up your character. Yeah. So like when you fight Batman, you're really not going to know what you're going to get going in. There's a base set, yes, but it's going to be really tricky. Yeah, and it's going to be to me, it's going to be one of the most exciting things is going online and seeing all these different 
this this almost infinite number of Batmans that you're going to be fighting in Aquaman. So, so you really don't know what you're going to get. It is at its core, it's Batman. It's not like you know Batman's going to suddenly get I I uh, you know heat vision like yeah. Superman does. Or something. It will be fundamentally Batman, but we're trying to give the the, the players as many uh, access to as many uh, variables as possible to, to mold the character. Uh, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask that you have thousands of pieces of gear that you can get. Is this setting the game up to do mi a microtransaction system? Well, it's, it's absolutely not setting the game up to do it. You know, we haven't decided what we're going to do for the people who don't want to spend. You know, this feature, I, if I would describe it, I would say it's something that we would like to see lasting, you know, months. You know, many months and, and, and the process of playing it up. Some players may not want to actually spend all that time to level up their characters. Yeah. And they may want some kind of another way to do it. But we haven't really made any kind of decisions based on that. So, Got it.